So thank you very much. I'm Harry, Harry Dankovich. I'm in the Mechanical Science and Engineering program, but really my background is not terribly important. And I will uh, back step a little bit from the uh, uh, role that I was assigned. I'm not the head of this partnership, but I'm one of the two faculty liaisons uh, in, the, in the university. The other person <coughs> is Anna Stianput, who happens to recently have become the director for the European Union Center on campus, but she's otherwise a, a faculty member in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Um, this is a program that we uh, called INSPIRE uh, as an uh, acronym for Illinois Sweden Program for Educational and Research Exchange. It is not specifically targeting KTH, at least not in its original installation, although KTH became very early on the focal point of our effort. Uh, and we then uh, grew it to include other universities in Stockholm, uh, namely Stockholm University, which is a uh, university that has faculties of natural science, uh, humanities, social science, economics, law, uh, and has a lot of collaboration with KTH, including joint shared facilities. Uh, they're literally a stone throw from each other, these two institutions in Stockholm. Uh, and a third university in Stockholm, namely the, the Karolinska Institutet, which is a uh, medical faculty, solely medical faculty. That university also collaborates with KTH, uh, for example, in the area of bioinformatics. Um, and uh, medical technology. So there's a lot of collaboration between these universities and together, as far as we see them from our end, they appear as a very, very comprehensive institution, although locally in Sweden they really are three separate institutions with their own administrative uh, units and, and uh, um, structure. Uh, so the, the partnership, uh, Nancy suggested it, uh, described it as an exchange, which is certainly true. This mouse is having funny things going on to it. All right, anyway. Um, certainly true, it's an exchange. It's an exchange of all kinds of things. It's an exchange of faculty, as we have visitors uh, right now from KTH here, uh, visiting the uh, Sustainable Technology Center. Uh, we have faculty going in the other direction from a variety of colleges and departments. Uh, we've had staff traveling also, so not just uh, uh, you know, tenure line faculty or research faculty, but also uh, research staff from this institution traveling to Sweden. Uh, for example, in the sustainable uh, built structure uh, area, uh, energy use and so forth, land use management. There have been uh, people traveling who are uh, more on the staff level. So it's not restricted at all to faculty exchange. Uh, there's also a fair amount of student exchange, uh, both at the undergraduate level, graduate level, uh, and uh, we've had uh, you know, summer schools organized in various topics. We've had courses organized uh, both here and in Sweden. One course I can point you to, this is the website you're most welcome to go to. It's called inspire.illinois.edu. Not too difficult to remember. Um, there's a uh, program called Environment and Society in the Changing Arctic. Uh, this is a summer course that's been offered now two years in a row, five weeks at KTH with about 17 KTH students and 17 Illinois students. Uh, and then a week and a half or so, I think this year might even have been two weeks, at uh, Svalbard, which is uh, a, a, a group of islands uh, in north of the Arctic Circle, north of the uh, Scandinavian Peninsula. Um, and so there's a video which you're most welcome to view as well, uh, and, and blogs and so on where the students describe what they experienced. Um, so this is a very sort of unique arrangement where we have an opportunity to take advantage of resources and knowledge uh, and, and a context that they can offer in Scandinavia uh, to serve our students. Uh, there were actually two Illinois faculty uh, co-teaching this class at KTH and on Svalbard. Uh, we've had similar discussions with Stockholm University that has uh, efforts uh, with regards to the Baltic Sea, for example. They have a research lab on the Baltic. And the Baltic Sea, I think, is one that uh, Friedrich has a lot of interest in in the context of the algae research, but there's a lot of other things one can learn uh, there as well. And all of these universities are, are you know, highly reputable institutions with uh, long traditions and histories. Uh, and they operate in a different context in many cases than we do. Uh, certainly in the context of the Arctic, there's obviously a lot of development now taking place that has cultural and social economical um, influences on on peoples and, and uh, first peoples, for example, in, in the northern parts of Sweden. Um, and so those are things we can learn from here as well and share with our students. Uh, another thing that might be of interest to some of you here, um, and some of you might be aware of it, uh, there uh, is collaboration, of course, taking place between Sweden and the US in, in, independently of what we do or try to encourage, uh, including a visit by our president to uh, Stockholm and to the KTH campus uh, on the topic of fuel cell technology only a few weeks ago. Um, which sort of made the news here, but it was a little bit uh, hidden. Uh, there's a recent effort uh, here by the United States Agency for International Development and the Swedish International Development Corporation Agency uh, for a call on uh, securing water for food. Uh, so we have on campus a water campus, uh, which is a, a National Science Foundation, I believe, center, 
that includes faculty and staff in a variety of research areas. Uh, and, uh, and we know that there are people uh, in Sweden and, and, and at KTH who have an interest in, in these issues as well. And there is, in fact, a group now uh, trying to collaborate and find opportunities to seek uh, this funding as well as other funding that is available for international co collaboration. And I don't want to keep going for too long here. Uh, we have internal funds. Uh, each of the institutions, uh, or actually I should say primarily KTH, Stockholm University, and Illinois have put funds, money towards uh, you know, spurring this partnership and seeding collaboration between our institutions, uh, both in terms of occasionally supporting the students, not so much undergraduate students, but definitely graduate student travel, hosting students, um, and hosting and, and sending our faculty and staff. Um, we don't specifically fund research. We won't buy the material for you. Uh, we won't pay a research assistantship. But we have significant funds that can be used, or at least have been used thus far, um, for covering you know, serious expenses associated with enabling international collaboration. The idea is that the research that we do, and you do, uh, has uh, parties that are more specifically interested in your topic and your discipline and able to support it if your, the work you do is good, but they may not have the money set aside for the internationalization component. And, and this is an opportunity, we hope, to afford that uh, connection with the institutions that have other resources available to them. So there was a deadline recently that uh, has now passed. We got a, a large number of applications for more money than we probably are able to allocate, which is a good thing. Uh, there's also another component of money here, uh, a, f a scholarship that was recently announced by Stockholm University um, at a $70,000 value for a fully funded two-year master's program uh, in any one of 76 different um, English language master's programs at Stockholm University, specifically targeted to a University of Illinois student. So a University of Illinois senior can apply for this, and there are no, one, no other universities that are uh, eligible to apply for this particular opportunity. And things like that have, become, have been available uh, similar nature uh, from KTH, and we try to uh, also uh, encourage uh, those kinds of opportunities. Um, there have been several high-level meetings. You can read about them here. Uh, there is an archive of ongoing activities. Uh, this is what's going on this year, including Friedrich and I think Maria also visiting in February. Am I right? Yes. So we have that at the very top and somewhere at the bottom here is probably where, where Friedrich and Maria are visiting this time. So this is all that's happened in 2013 thus far that I've been able to find out about. And there's occasional things going on that I don't know about. Uh, there's a calendar. We have another uh, uh, presentation in a week's time by a faculty member from Stockholm University uh, and another Stockholm University faculty member coming in November. In November we'll also have a visit from Karolinska in uh, the area of audiology and speech pathology. Um, uh, we have courses that are offered in civil engineering and in, uh, in other topics. So there's a lot of stuff going on. I don't want to bore you with it. Um, I think this is a really fantastic opportunity. I'm happy that uh, Friedrich and Maria have, have felt welcome enough to come back. Uh, we hope to see them many times more. And if I can do anything to facilitate this collaboration or any others that come along, uh, do please seek me out. And just to finally, to give a home to this effort, the International Programs and Studies uh, unit on campus is the sort of official unit that houses Inspire. Uh, that's the unit that has the study abroad program. And so the director of that is Tim Barnes, uh, whose name I think might be mentioned at the bottom of the funding page. So he's another uh, source you can, no, I don't think I have it here. Um, there we go. So Tim Barnes, he's the director of uh, the Illinois Strategic International Partnerships. He's another person that you can turn to uh, when it comes to matters of sort of administrative issues, okay, which I may not be that knowledgeable about. <coughs> if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Sure.